was good today. I saw it wrong. You was. Listen to who? I had to sing. I had to sing "Shook" to Jessica before I left home. She didn't think I remembered the words, but I remembered every one of them. <laughs> you know I can. It ain't free though. <laughs> Call the meeting to order. Please call the roll. Mr. Buckner. Here. Reverend Camp. Here. Mayor Gilstrap. Here. Vice Mayor Jones. Here. Dr. Miller. Here. Mr. Saunders. Here. Mr. Shanks. Here. Mr. Vogler. Here. Mr. Whittle. Here. Please stand as uh, Councilman Sherman Saunders will lead us in the invocation and pledge of the allegiance to the flag. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Father, we come before you tonight to say thank you for your many blessings. We ask forgiveness for those things we may have done that were not your wishes. We ask blessings for our city, our region, our nation, and your children everywhere. Bless our president as he leads this nation the 535 men and women that compose both houses of our government. We ask protection for our men and women in uniform who put their lives on the line daily to keep us safe. We ask for world peace. In your name, to you, we submit this petition. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On special recognition, so we'll move right on to communications from visitors, citizens who desire to speak on matters not listed on the agenda will be heard at this time. Citizens who desire to speak on agenda items will be heard when the agenda item is considered. Anyone wishing to speak on items not on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda item, we only have one item. It's the minutes. What is your pleasure? Reverend Cowboy. Motion to receive. Motion to approve the minutes of May 16, 2017. Is there a second? Councilman Buckner. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mayor Gilstrap. Aye. Vice Mayor Jones. Aye. Dr. Miller. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Under old business, consideration of fiscal year 2018 city budget and capital and special projects plan. Item number one, what is the pleasure? Councilman Butler. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve a resolution approving the budgets of the various funds of the City of Danville for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018. Is there a second to the motion? Councilman Saunders. Any discussion on the motion? Councilman Shanks. Uh, yes, Mayor. I'd like to say I will not be voting in favor of the budget, but let me first say that I respect the manner in which the city manager, city staff, and city council handled the, the budget process. All parties worked hard to reduce or eliminate certain tax increases and did so respectfully. The reason I'm opposed to this budget is the fact that many of the reductions in this year's budget are not reoccurring expenses. 
by not making permanent reductions in spending, such as eliminating certain vacant positions and including other attrition positions to, to, eliminate, to help eliminate positions, we're kicking the can down the road, I'm afraid. Since the reduction of force in city positions in 2012, which eliminated 47 positions, the city now, five years later, employs more <coughs> positions than prior to this reduction. Additional city staffing follows decades of double-digit population declines, which are still declining, but at a slower rate. Next year's budget will be even further out of balance than this year's. We already know that. We already knew that before we adopt this budget and before we deliberated this budget. So I cannot support the budget, which fails to address those reoccurring expenses that will be the root of next year's budget problems and will be the root of next year's shortfall. And again next year, we will see more proposed tax increases, probably more acceptable or more unacceptable than those negotiated this year. Furthermore, in the past couple of years, we have begun to uh, raid the general fund balance, which we have purposely been increasing. Just as growing the fund balance raises our credit worthiness, which makes, uh, which makes it easier and less expensive to borrow money, which in turn helps, uh, helps to fund certain special projects, we continue to use the fund balance. If we do so, Further, it could result in a reduction of the city's credit worthiness, which will in turn increase our costs of borrowing for future special projects. So I'll be voting no on the budget. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. Come forward. The state your name. Glenn, please pull that microphone toward you so people may hear you from home. Is that, is that better? That's better. Thank All you. Right. Uh, I'm here with some comments on what I believe is, to me, most confusing situation concerning your current proposed budget and some incidentals that have come along with that. By the way, have I been talking for two minutes and 28 seconds already? Or? You only get three. I thought if we were talking on something that was scheduled, that it was five. I think uh, the uh, city attorney. That's for a public hearing. This is public not a public hearing. hearing. Is three minutes, and we've already had a public hearing on the budget. That's so, correct. Yeah, well, so okay. is this, uh, and, and just, just for the record, how, how much time do we have for the Glenn to speak? Three minutes he gets. He gets three minutes. Clark, is that your understanding? That's, that's my understanding. Your understanding is three? Yes, sir. <coughs> okay. Well, let's start him over. Okay. Thank you, sir. There was a time when I was much younger here in Danville, when men of honor and integrity volunteered their time away from their business, away from their families, to participate in the business of the city and set on a city council here. Those times are no longer here. Our city government now is not businessmen who do this out of a <laughs> obligation for a short period of time. It's evolved into something much, much different. The present proposed budget is asking people like myself to contribute more to taxes in order for you to be able to do things like make this purchase of this white building, 
which I think is just a total disaster, and I've racked my brain to try to figure out what logic could have been used to come up with that. And I haven't. Many of us in my position, retired people, property owners, paying taxes, we're getting much more resistance from practically everyone. And I don't believe you need more money to waste. You're already $5 million in the hole. I don't think you've paid it back in the last year and a half. I really do believe that this is this town's going to be bankrupt. It's going to earn the title of Little Detroit on the Dan because of mismanagement in areas like this. There's just no way that the citizens of Danville can continue to sustain these kinds of debts when it's not necessary. It's not necessary at all. You're spending way too much money on way too many areas and endeavors if you want to if you want to make an investment buy a fast food franchise you could hire up to 30 people probably make some money and collect some taxes too which you won't do with the white building My time is up, but I would just be repeating the same things that all of us in Danville already know if I continued. But uh, I hope I'm not around when this city does go under. You know, Detroit, Chicago, the entire state of Illinois is bankrupt. I don't think Danville is very far behind in that. Uh, the caliber is not here anymore. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Dr. Miller. <clears throat> I'll be voting for the budget. I, I think it was a long, arduous, arduous process, but it became a compromise. I do agree with Mr. Shanks on one aspect. Uh, we are kicking the can down the road, uh, but from a different angle. I'm a small business person. I employ 23 people. And I know that you have to bring in more revenue than you spend if you're going to succeed. Unfortunately, cities and counties have limited sources of revenue, real estate taxes, personal property taxes, lodging, meals taxes, et cetera. We can't, there's other things we can't touch. Uh, I think we, uh, you know, we had to increase taxes this year. It, it was, uh, there was no choice. We are under collecting versus other cities and counties. Uh, and uh, we are trying to build this city. To build this city, there are certain monies we have to spend. We, we, I think uh, just like the Berry Hill, you know, we now have, uh, you know, people said that was a waste of money, and now we've got two industries that are highly interested out there and more to come. So you have to go out, you have to go out and spend some money to draw industries in. There's just no other way. Uh, hopefully, with our new uh, uh, businesses coming in, uh, new revenues, uh, the population will increase and we'll have more revenues. Uh, so I think uh, this is a way we, we have to, you know, uh, I think the majority of the people in this city, at least who I talk to, are uh, like what this council is doing, like how we've improved the city, how we've improved the downtown how we're attracting more businesses and we're working on the schools and police. So I, I think uh, we need to continue the way we're going and uh, to improve the city. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Hearing on a call the roll, please. <coughs> Reverend Campbell? Aye. Uh, Mayor Gilstrap? Aye. Vice Mayor Jones? Aye. Dr. Miller? Aye. <coughs> Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? No. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? No. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Item number two, approving the capital and special projects. What is your pleasure? Councilman Vogler. 
Yes, Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt a resolution approving the fiscal year 2018 capital and special projects plan for the city of Danville, Virginia. Is there a second? Councilman Campbell. Any discussion on this motion? <coughs> Any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Mayor Gilstrap? Aye. Vice Mayor Jones? Aye. Aye. Dr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. And I'm item number three. Budget appropriation for the fiscal year 2018. What is your pleasure, Councilman Campbell? It's now moved for adopting the budget appropriation ordinance for fiscal year 2018. Is there a second to the motion? Second by Councilman Whittle. Any discussion on the motion? Please, uh, Councilman Saunders. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This uh, motion approves all the appropriate money for all of fiscal 18. That would include money for Danville Public Schools. Uh, the record shows my vote with regards to funding for Danville Public Schools uh, separately. My request was ignored. Every year, council spend a lot of time uh, discussing what council will give the school board each year. My attempt, my reason for asking my three-year plan uh, was and still is to remove some of the debate by having a guide on what is needed. So for at least each of three years, we would have some idea of what's needed and have plenty of time to plan for that. While my request has been ignored, I am still asking for a three-year plan. By voting for this motion, I am voting in favor of appropriating money to Danville Public Schools because I do support our students, our teachers, and our staff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Jones? Aye. Dr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? No. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mayor Gilstrap? Aye. Under appointments, consideration for appointments of the following boards, I recognize Vice Mayor Jones, and let me, for the record, we will do all these appointments under one motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we adopt the resolution reappointing Stephen Daniel as a member of the Airport Commission, a resolution appointing Sheila Baines as a member of the Danville Community College Board, a resolution reappointing Tammy Warren as a member of the Danville Community Policy and Management Team, a resolution appointing Demetrius Cruz as a member of the Danville Community Policy and Management Team, a resolution appointing Sandy L. Irby as a, the Danville, Pennsylvania Community Service Representative of the Danville Community Policy and Management Team, a resolution appointing Cynthia Robati as the Health Department Representative of the Danville Community Policy and Management Team, a resolution reappointing Reverend Rufus Fuller as a member of the Danville, Pennsylvania County Community Services Board, a resolution appointing Hams Dobbins as a member of the Danville Utilities Commission, a resolution appointing Sheila Williamson Branch as a member of the Danville Utility Commission to fill an unexpired term, a resolution reappointing Vanessa Kane as a member of the Danville Utility Commission, a resolution appointing Larry Toomer as a member of the Danville Redevelopment and Housing Authority to fill an unexpired term, a resolution appointing Jessica Griffith as a member of the Social Services Advisory Board to fill an unexpired term, a resolution appointing Taekwon Graves as a member of the Social Services Advisory Board, a resolution appointing Jessica Griffith as a member of the Southern Area Agency on Aging to fill an unexpired term, and Mr. Mayor, a resolution reappointing Alexis Urquhart as a member of the Transportation Advisory Committee. And Mr. Mayor, some of the members are here now for these boards. If, you, if it's okay to ask them to stand. Let me get a second to the motion Great. first. May I? Councilman Vogler seconded the motion. 
Uh, yes, now you may do so. If I can ask you all to stand, and we would like to say thank you all for a willing to serve on the board. If those of you are here, thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Motion and second. Any discussion on the motion? Call the roll, please. Dr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Bowler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mayor Gilstrap? Aye. Vice Mayor Jones? Aye. Uh, at this time, we'll get an update on the financial funds through May the 30th, 2017. Because we're having a work session tonight, the general fund financial update's been moved to this meeting. Right, give me a second, I'll pull up a graph that we'll refer to later. And Michael, before you start, let me uh, say that uh, this is a, a request from the team that set the agenda that the public may also be interested in the financial updates, and we also wanted to, uh, uh, why am I getting the echo? Uh, we also wanted to not um, have a special work session just for the update, so thank you. All right, well, in the packet for this evening, you'll find the uh, financial results as of May 31st of this year. Uh, that is obviously the 11th month of our fiscal year, 90, roughly 93% complete. Um, you'll see that revenues, uh, total revenues for the general fund are at 88 million. That represents 89% of our budget. Uh, that's very comparable with last year. Uh, we were also at 89% of our budget at the end of May of last year. Uh, this does uh, give us an increase of roughly a million dollars <laughs> over last year, and that is being primarily driven by our local taxes, such as sales, meals, uh, lodging, those type of local taxes. Um, I have a slide up here, and it's in your packet as well, uh, showing our local taxes. Uh, the blue bar indicates our budget. The red is our actual collections for this fiscal year, and the green is last year. So you can visually see that comparison. Uh, you'll see that our local taxes are in the top left corner. That's total local taxes. So that does not include real estate or personal property, but rather just our local taxes. Uh, to the right there at the top is our sales tax. Uh, there's a target line on the rest of these. Uh, the black target line uh, stretching across the top of the graph indicates where we should be if we incurred or in, uh, collected these revenues on an equal basis each month. Uh, so at the end of May, we should be meeting target. And as you can see on the sales tax, we are exceeding that target a bit. Uh, we are collecting more than last year. I do expect us to meet and exceed our budget for this year as we uh, end the year. Uh, also, you'll see the same uh, pattern with meals tax and lodging. Uh, lodging is right at the target line, so we are, we are meeting the budget. I think it was about $7,000 over budget for the end of May. Uh, so all of our local taxes are performing well and are meeting or exceeding budget. Um, to the next slide. Uh, before we talk about this, um, also I'll, I'll bring you up to speed on what we are experiencing through June. Since we're getting close to the end of the fiscal year, I can kind of give you a, an update on the collection of real estate and personal property taxes. Uh, as of today, we are between 99% and 100% of our real estate uh, revenue uh, of what was budgeted, so that's very good. We still have 10 days left in June, and auditing and accounting standards allow us to look forward 60 days. So if we have any late payments coming in during the month of July and August, we can pull those into the current year as well. Uh, so we do have some time, so we should have no trouble meeting that 100% of our budget for real estate taxes. Uh, the similar situation exists for personal property. We're actually at 100% or slightly over right now. Uh, so that should uh, easily, has already met our budget for this year, and we should have a little excess in that category as well. Uh, so that explains our total revenues uh, for the general fund. All the other categories of our general fund are right on target or, or outperforming, so we're, we're good about revenues this year. On the expenditure side, at the end of May, uh, the total general fund expenditures were right at 90 million. This is about 80% of budget. Uh, the departmental expending uh, expenditures were below budget at 88%. And again, I said we're close to 93% of the year complete, so the departments are keeping things under budget. Um, you can see this at the bottom here on the bottom left corner, uh, departmental spending. Again, the target line is where we would be if we equally spent uh, throughout the year, so we're under that right now. Now, we do have a, long, a lot of invoices to process. We're still processing invoices that are, are for goods and services that we received in May. We got June. Usually it takes us until about the third or fourth week of July to get all of the fiscal 17 invoices processed. So we still have ways to go. Uh, to the right there, you'll see a recap of our fund balance at the end of May. 
Our total fund balance was slightly over $46 million. Of that amount, the largest part of the pie, the, the blue part, is our unassigned fund balance, and that was right at $36 million at the end of May. Uh, we started the year at $37 million. Uh, but as I say, um, uh, we still have a lot of revenue that comes in in June uh, that's not reflected in this. We still have a lot of expenditures uh, that will occur in June and through July as we process the fiscal 17 invoices. So it's a very volatile number right now still, um, but it looks pretty good right now. I still expect us that we'll probably draw down our fund balance a little bit because we budgeted to do so and had some uh, other voted expenses from fund balance. Uh, so with that, if you have any questions, I'll attempt to answer those. Uh, Councilman Shanks. Uh, thank you for another real good report and a good format, but can you, uh, going back to the local taxes, the charts, uh, which I believe are on page 71, the uh, meals tax, is that indicating a $1.5 million increase from prior year? Am I doing the math right? Uh, the increase is from $6.7 million to $6.8 million from last year. So that would be one point. But no, sir. Uh, one less point, than that. I'm um, sorry, point uh, seven. It's about 136,000 over last year. 136,000 for meals tax. What about total revenues? How much is that difference there? Total revenues? Yes. Uh, for the whole general fund? Right. Yes. Uh, that's roughly one and a half to two million more than last year. Uh, probably half of that's local tax. Some of the other increases are just timing on state revenues that we've received a little earlier this year than last year. The uh, 98 is through year to date. The 98 million is through year to date. July so through still, May. Still have another month to go. Uh, yes, the, 90, <coughs> the 98 is the budget. Uh, the red column would be. I'm sorry, the 86. Right, that's what we've received through the end of May. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, Councilman years, Miller. A few years ago, we had an issue with uh, not collecting our delinquent taxes at a good rate. And there were a lot of people owed the city money. Are we doing better with that now? We have done better. Uh, last year, our delinquent collection of real estate taxes uh, was at or over a million dollars, uh, probably not close to a million dollars, which was probably the record we've ever had. Uh, obviously, with our implementation of using an external collection agency for the ones that we are unable to collect ourselves, uh, you expect to see a, a large uh, return on that effort at first. Uh, so we, we've been with them for quite a few years now. I think so our experience in collection will drop some um, just because the, the, if you want to say the easy uh, collections have, have, been, have occurred by now. Uh, but I think one result of that we're seeing is a, a quicker percentage of collections in the current year. Uh, people are paying uh, maybe now that, that maybe would have waited uh, for one reason or another. Uh, so we have seen successes in that area. Uh, we also have uh, we're able to auction properties off that uh, have been foreclosed because of tax delinquencies and getting those back into the hands of people who will take care of them and, and uh, pay the taxes on those. So we have seen quite a bit of success with our delinquent collections. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilman Bugner. Yeah, Dr. Miller answered, asked part of my question about delinquencies. And could you also, um, with the numbers you just gave us, could you reassure everybody watching at home that we're nowhere near going bankrupt? Please? No, uh, we, we have a very healthy fund balance. Uh, and, and you know, through work sessions, you know, I'm very much aware that you are very conscious of spending yes, from fund balance. Um, so I'm anxious to get to the end of this year so we can see how we finish out, which will give us an idea of, of uh, if we need to make any budgetary adjustments mid-year, you know, so we'll be able to plan well. Uh, thank but, you for all your hard work. I'll be perfectly clear. Contrary to a previous speaker, the financial health of the city is very good. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Say it again. Just, just, <laughs> just to see the unrestricted funds. We have a $20 million mandate that we have to keep, and we've got $16 million in reserve above that. That's very, very helpful. Right. Sir. Councilman Shanks. But is it true that over the last five years, our fund balance has been increasing for the most part, and as a result, bond ratings have been increased? Or increased? Yes. We've Two been, or three times? We've been fortunate. Um, <coughs> over the last three or four years, we have had some significant increases in our uh, fund balance. Uh, a lot of that was due to uh, attrition, uh, vacancy savings in our, in our workforce. Uh, and as a result of that, um, in addition to conservative financial policies that we have in place, um, we did receive uh, from two different credit rating agencies, we received an increase from one, one year and an increase from another credit rating agency the following year. So that, that has happened in the last two or three years. And that's, you would attribute that to, to the financial conservativeness of spending and, and our conservative spending policies and our healthy fund balance those two qualities help offset any uh, 
economic uh, struggles that we have in our community that helps to offset that negative impact. You're using a lot of terms that people at home are probably saying, <laughs> huh? So, so to put this in a, broad, a broader term, right. people are familiar with the <laughs> rainy day fund. So let's just use, how much money do we, we, we have in the rainy day fund? Uh, when we say fund balance, we are talking about the savings account exactly. for the city. So how much is it? Uh, right now the total is $46 million, but about $10 million of that has been spoken for by projects or something like that. So we have 36 currently at the end of May uh, that is available for the coming year budget or for other projects. As, 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 Mr. Buck, as Councilman Buckner said, <coughs> sometimes people don't n understand those numbers. But right. thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman Buckner. Yes, sir. Councilman Buckner. And in and, and closing, and to piggyback off the Vice Mayor's point, our rainy day fund is refer to it in that way, the amount of money in there today is substantially higher than 10 years ago, correct? Yes. So we are nowhere near bankrupt. Thank you. Councilman Shank. Yeah, just, just since we're clarifying things tonight for the public, <laughs> uh, with regard to uh, the uh, <clears throat> expenditures that we've had in the past years, the fund balance has been growing, which is what we've talked about today, it has been growing, and as a result, the uh, bond rating has continued to grow. <coughs> we, though, it's not like we have that money that is there to be spent. We have obligations with uh, credit rating companies or uh, AMP Ohio or others to have a reserved amount that we should never go under. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so we have an established minimum fund ba balance policy of roughly 20% uh, of estimated revenue. So about $20 million is, is our, our floor. I, I just didn't want the public to have the misunderstanding that we had $46 million out right. there. Right. That's right. Thank you. All right. Any further questions? Thank you. There's no action taken on this uh, item A. It's under new business simply because it was the first time we have done it in a regular <coughs> meeting instead of a work session. Future meetings, this will be done at the beginning of the meeting under uh, announcements, uh, reports, or special recognitions. Item B under new business, consideration of proving a resolution to authorize the AMP to manage the revenue meter at Schoolfield Hydro. What is your pleasure? Councilman Vogel. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt a resolution to approve the form and authorize the execution of the agency designation agreement with American Municipal Power Incorporated. Second, Councilman Jones. Discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mayor Gilster? Aye. Vice Mayor Jones? Aye. Dr. Miller? Aye. Consideration of a resolution adding three additional program measures to the Home Safe Rebate Program. What is your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. Mayor, I make a motion that we adopt a resolution adding three additional measures to the Danville Utilities Home Save Residential Energy Efficiency Program. Second, Councilman Shanks. Discussion on the motion. Councilman yeah, Shanks. Just for the benefit of the public, this is uh, part of the Home Save Program that Danville Utilities has for not only electrical uh, sales, but now this moves into natural gas, which is also going to help shave the peak demand on our electrical system during the high usage periods, which will benefit the city. But more importantly, I'd like to take this opportunity just to encourage folks to take a look at the Danville Utilities website, where there is a tremendous list of home save programs available where the property owner uh, can have a contractor come in or can and some of the things can actually do themselves that include rebates for anything from uh, uh, insulation to furnishes. <coughs> What's being included in this program tonight are rebates up to twelve or fourteen hundred dollars to uh, to in, uh, upgrade your furnace to include gas usage or gas uh, heat. So I would encourage the public to take a look at Danville Utilities. They also have a new utility portal that is going to be online, is online right now where you can pay 
starting July 1, pay your utility bills online without a charge being charged to the consumer. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Call roll, please. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mayor Gilstrap? Aye. Vice Mayor Jones? Aye. Dr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Song? Aye. Communications. Deputy City Manager. City Attorney? Yes, sir. Um, our next regularly scheduled meeting falls on what would normally be what falls on July 4th. So by city code, our next regular meeting will be Thursday, July 6th at 7 o'clock instead of meeting here on the 4th. City Clerk? Nothing, sir. Call roll, please. Mr. Bogler? Madison's mother can go to bed early tonight. I have nothing to say. Thank you. Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. So, so can I. <laughs> Mr. Whittle? N nothing, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Buckner? Complete shock. Well, I'm going to take this time to kick my feet back and talk a little bit. Cut them uh, off. I'd like to, <laughs> Three minutes. I'd like to congratulate my wife uh, on her recent... Uh, trip to the Appalachian Trail. She spent the last week hiking with a group of ladies uh, 60 miles through the Appalachian Trail of Virginia. Um, she had a wonderful time, but we are certainly glad she's back home. I'd also like to send my condolences to the family of my dear friend and all of our dear friend, Miss Lori Moran. Uh, this region has suffered a great loss with the passing of Miss Moran. Um, but, you know, we had our meeting yesterday at the Tourism Board, and a, a very good point was brought up by our chair. Um, Lori would have us push on and keep on with the good work that we started and continue the good work and the groundwork that she laid for us to continue this uh, great things that are happening in this region. Um, my heart goes out to the friends and family and all the businesses who have suffered this. I mean, it's just a great loss. Um, also, I'd like to congratulate the Wendell Scott Foundation for a wonderful red carpet event last Friday night. Um, the premiere of Cars 3, of you that don't know, uh, Wendell Scott is very well represented in that movie uh, by the number 34 car, River Scott. And uh, we had just a wonderful event. There were children everywhere, families everywhere. It was just a great outing. Um, I encourage you all to get out and support your local hometown hero, Mr. Wendell Scott, Mr. River Scott, in the Cars 3 movie. That's all tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Reverend Campbell? Yes. Uh, we have lost a real soldier for the city of Danville. That's Laura Moran. I think all of the councilmen have personal relationship and reference to work within the community. And... Laura and myself, we go back many years. She'd be thoroughly, thoroughly missed here in Danville. So we send our regards out to the family in the hour of grief. We would like to remind everyone about the 4th of July celebration. There's going to be a lot of great things happening here on that day in the Karen Pavilion. And lastly, I have learned being on city council. Council are faced with many challenges. Sometimes some of the challenges that we face with and looking toward the future, what would be the betterment of our community? There would be some major economic decisions. I remember uh, eight years ago looking at the downtown area was not at that time the River District. There were decisions that we had to make to bring the city where it is now. And now we see the fruits of those decisions. The decision about the white mill. Yes, there are some citizens in Danville may not understand, but I think it's a very wise move that the city is doing to purchase that, that we'll have control of it. And with the Riverview Park that is being developed, it can bring a lot of tourists and to our area would be a great economic development tool to bring more prosperity to our community. We all are concerned about what tomorrow is going to look like in our community. Now, I, I want to thank each and every council person for the work that we're doing and decisions that we have to make to have Danville a better community than what it is. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor Gilstrap. 
Uh, I'd also like to offer my condolences to uh, family and friends of Lori Moran. She was a tremendous asset to our community and she will be missed. I'd also like to offer my condolences to the family of uh, friends of Sam Branch, who happens to be a, a husband of our treasurer, Sheila Williamson Branch. Remind everyone there's a Beach Music Festival Saturday at Carrington Pavilion. It's going to be really good. Hope you can come. It's very affordable. <coughs> Happy Fourth of July to everyone. And if you haven't seen the field of honor and all the flags in our river district, take a look. It is spectacular. And happy 4th of July to each of you. Vice Mayor Jones. When I think of Laurie standing at the podium just a couple of weeks ago, and when Dr. Miller sent out the message, I think it was Councilman Buckner, just, we were just stunned. But when I think about Lori standing at the podium just a couple of weeks ago and smiling, I said to myself once we got that message, I wonder how many other people are pained but yet smiling through their pain. We talk about so many inc incidents and situations we have in our community, but it's so important as was forestated by Councilman Campbell that we really live and love and laugh with one another every day because we don't know how another one is pain. So to Lori's family, my prayers and thoughts continue to go out with you. Also, as Councilman Buckner stated, Friday at the theater was just phenomenal. Um, Warwick Scott and the Scott family, with what you all did for our community, there was a lot of, pot there was stuff for the young people, and that was huge. And we talk about things that are going on in our community. There are so many wonderful things going on in our community. And Mr. Mayor, I'd like to say this. I was contemplating about whether I should say this or not, but when Michael made his presentation, I thought about our city manager, our deputy city manager, and, and our entire team. And what I thought about is when people have freely come to the podium and to the microphone, and they tend to say almost anything they want to say, I thought about something that was shared with me this week by my advisor. My advisor said to me, we think about what we go through, but how many people who are doing things on the other side go home with a headache every day? To say and hear things about our team that they possibly were going into bankruptcy, I just couldn't imagine how they feel hearing things like that. I'm so appreciative to you, Councilman Buckner, for saying what you said, because what, as Councilman Campbell stated, everybody has feelings, and everybody works hard every day. And sometimes council, we sit on this side of the table, we don't say anything. We just take all the shots that come at us. But it comes a time that we got to stand up for those who are working very hard for us. And I want to tell all of you, Earl and Ken and Michael, for what you all are doing to move this city forward. We appreciate you, and we appreciate your team. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Dr. Miller? Yeah, I want to commend Council Buckner's wife. Uh, I've been on the Appalachian Trail hiking, and I can tell you, it's not flat. You climb a mountain, you get to the top, you go down the other side, and guess what's waiting on the other side? Another mountain. So it's similar to what we do. We, we, we fight our way through, and we, we overcome mountains here, and then there's another mountain, but we keep climbing. Uh, Lori Moran, well, just tremendous loss. She was our number one ambassador. Uh, you know. Chamber of Commerce meeting last uh, week. I mean, it just wasn't the same. You go in, she's always there registering you, smiling. Never saw her without a smile on her face. It was just like there was a void in there. So I, I, I wonder, you know, I don't, I just throw this out here, something we can talk about that maybe it'd be posthumously that we ought to make some special awards, such as an honorary citizenship to Lori to give to her family or something like that, just to say how much we appreciate that. Well, she wasn't a citizen of Danville. She was one of Danville's foremost citizens. Uh, music on Main this Thursday, Elvis Tribute, uh, and then the Pixar movie, the number one box office movie this weekend. Guess what? Cars 3. It displaced Wonder Woman, The Mummy, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> was number one and featuring Danville's uh, River Scott or Wendell Scott. We didn't get to wear tuxedos and have ballroom gowns on, but we did have a red carpet. And it's just the, the amount of notoriety and good publicity for Danville, and we had a ball. 
Uh, in the paper today, DCC Precision Machinery Team is going to compete in the nationals. It won't be long before GW will have students feeding into that DCC Precision Machinery Team. And uh, finally, uh, I was down in New Bern last week, my life anniversary, and I came across these hats. And you know, it's a popular trend now. You wear your flag on your clothes. So I've gotten each of you gentlemen a hat because I think there's nobody more patriotic group in this city than this council. So please wear your hat on the 4th of July and other days to show your patriotic feeling. Thank you. Mr. Saunders. Thank you. As stated earlier, Laurie Moran would have us to press on, to simply press on. Great lady. And I think with regards to Laurie Moran and some others, to the question, how do we want to be remembered? What will be our legacy? When we leave this earth, what will, will we have done for our city, for our region, for our nation, for the world? And we ask that question. We think about Laurie, she did much. And hopefully it will cause us to do much as well. I also want to thank First Presbyterian Church for the wonderful service last night, for the prayer for our city, for our region, for our world. Really enjoyed that event. I also want to thank you, Dr. Miller, for this hat. And I am so glad that you finally found one that'll fit Mr. Shanks here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Mr. Shanks. Oh, boy. It won't fit over my cheese head. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than your cheese head. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, enough cannot be said about Lori Moran, and I'm sorry being eighth in line or ninth in line. It gets repetitive some nights, but I realized, well, we got word, I think it was last Tuesday night, I believe, but the, the rest of the week I reflected on much on, on things I was involved with, with the chamber or with other businesses. And I always thought of Lori, and, and when we saw each other, we, we hugged. And I, I, I always thought I was a special friend uh, of Lori's and she of mine. But in reflecting the last week, I realized she was a special friend to almost everybody I know. I have never, I've, I've realized this past week, I've never seen anyone quite like that. And Lori truly was, I believe, one of the biggest investors for our region there ever was. And she was a wonderful, wonderful person. And... Uh, she will be sorely missed. I think what she's done for our region and for our city should be enshrined somewhere. But she really invested her whole heart and body and soul in making our region a better place. And uh, it, it's amazing <coughs> to me that it took me until going to the funeral and looking around, around the room and seeing everybody they all had the same relationship I thought was I had, and I was special with Lori. I wasn't. Everybody, everybody had that relationship. So uh, <coughs> I just want to thank her family for sharing her with us and thank uh, everybody for keeping her in their prayers and her family. Thank you. <coughs> we do not meet first Tuesday but we meet Thursday, July the 6th. Meeting adjourned. <coughs>